Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Heart of New York show. We got her on again, Tony Jean. You're going to be more amazed this time than the first time because uh, we're talking about a complete change. We're, we're, we're talking about spirit, soul, and body, okay? And also on top of that, we're talking about the mind because as the Bible says, and I want to say this, as the Bible says, we will be transformed by the renewing of the mind. But we got to really be in the Word. We got to be in the Word. What I mean by that is you got to read your Bible, you got to study your Bible, you got to hear it. So when I suggest you read it, read it out loud so you hear it. You got to get involved with a good place to go where you, where you, the minister preaches the Word of God so you, because faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you want to do all that. Okay, so where comes to the next step? After that, as we said on our first show with Tony Jean, you got to get the renewal. You got to want it. And okay, we're not talking 99.9%. We're talking 100%. You need to put your whole, I don't know how to say it, Whatever you got, you got to put into it. You got to believe. That's what I'm looking for. You have to believe that this works, and it does work. So when you start renewing your mind, when you start feeding yourself, because we are the temple of God, when you start taking care of yourself, you will reap the benefits. We have both seen miracles happen right before our very eyes. And that could happen every one of you out there every one of you out there so last time tony jean last time we were just like finishing up on on your story on how it all got started so now you've been the lord spoke to you you heard you heard him speak to you mm-hmm. and he you're you're a hairdresser and the, all the chemicals that you used to breathe in are toxic ba 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 you went through the cancer and you start eating right so what happens now So what happens now? So I've maintained my health. So it's important to maintain our health. And once we get well, we're not going to just stop eating that way. We're going to continue by following the principles. So what we want to do is we want to do something like what I'm doing, and that's continuing to juice every day, continuing to, if you're a meat eater, which I'm not, I don't eat meat for a personal reason, but it's not unhealthy to not eat meat or to eat meat. Um, You want to look for grass fed, if you're going to be eating fish, you want to make sure it's wild caught, not farmed raised. You want to make sure your all your fruits and vegetables are organic because we can't just wash away pesticides and genetic mutations because they're systemic. They're actually inside of the cells and tissues of the produce. So you want to make sure that we're eating organically grown foods. And that's what I do each and every day. Make sure our grains are not only whole, but they're ancient grains. We want to go back to biblical times. And they're in, in, in certain scriptures in the Bible, um, like Ezekiel 4.9, it, it actually gives us what types of grains we're supposed to be eating, ancient grains, which differ greatly from the grains of today. Can we get briefly, let's go back to the meat. Okay, because uh, you love your meat, uh, man, I, I'm and that's okay. You, uh, let me let's go to Peter Luger's <laughs> and get some big steaks about this big. Oh, <laughs> Hopefully, they're oh. grass fed. So, in Deuteronomy, in the Bible, okay, what you state in your book, yes, that these are specifically included. Okay, that we can eat. Correct. All right, cattle, sheep, goat, deer, gazelle families. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, what do we look for? You're saying organic, okay, grass-fed. Yes. Well, when you go in a restaurant, do you, do you ask them? Or when you go to the supermarket, what do you look for? How do we find this stuff? This is a great question. So the first thing that you want to do is you, want to, you definitely want to read the book because it gives you the principles. It gives you the guidelines. But you want to make sure that when you go to a restaurant, maybe you don't want to just show up and, and ask the waiter. You really want to go online and research first for what restaurants provide grass-fed and wild-caught. You can find that online. Absolutely. Nowadays, you can find a lot of information. And you want to know why you can find it out there? Because of the demand, like people like myself and yourself and the viewers. They're interested in taking better care of their bodies, of their temples. So when you go online, you can actually Google what restaurants provide grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, because all restaurants don't have this. 
and you don't want to leave yourself open to prey when you're in a restaurant and here they don't have any of these things we don't want to poison our bodies because remember you know factory farm meat and dairy you know they're 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 eating all kinds of um uh, antibiotics, hormones, steroids, growth hormones to make them rapidly develop the meat and you know you don't want to put that in your body for sure. So w when they inject these animals with all these chemicals it doesn't leave them? It doesn't leave their bodies. It doesn't so leave their you bodies. get it and you put it on the grill and you cook it and some people are like, well done. It's They're still in there. Absolutely. It's not going to go away because, it. see, grass fed and grass finished means they're, they're finishing on grass. They're not finishing on grain. Right. They're outside. The best thing is to go to your farm or go to the farms. And there's actually a website called well, I, I mean, there's Wild no farm by Central Park. Where are they going to go? Believe it or not, there is. There's a, there's a website called eatwild.com. That's E A wild.com it'll take you to the Weston Price Foundation this information is in my book however that will give you a chapter leader no matter where you're living in the world you could be in New York City you could be in uh, you can be in Alabama it doesn't matter where you are it, you could be in other countries as well there are chapter leaders all over the world guided by the Weston A. Price Foundation, and it will actually tell you what farms are in your area that are following these types of principles that are grass-fed and grass-finished, where the animals are not given any type of hormones or antibiotics. They're not eating soy and corn. They are actually eating exactly what nature provided, the natural forages of wild legumes and grasses. So, they, so the meat that you're eating, you know, we're not only what we're eating, we're what our food is eating. So that is very important that you meet your farmer, you speak to your farmer, and see exactly where your food is coming from. That's this incredible. That's incredible. I, I, I would think... Uh, that if you cook it well, it's gone. And so many people think that, but right. it's, a, it's a misconception because what is making up that flesh? But exactly what it's eating, exactly what it's enduring. It's you know those little baby calves are ripped from the mother the moment they're born. So they're also their adrenals are on overload. So anything that they endure, you're eating. All the deadly emotion, all the the sadness. I mean, there's misery. There's actually emotional toxins that are involved in here as well. It's not only the toxins that they're eating. Physically, it's the emotional toxins. What do you mean by that? So, well, they're, they're unhappy. So when the adrenals are on overload, you actually create a toxin in your body that can harm us when, when we're eating, uh, the, you know, when we're partaking in this type of meat. Whoa. So you can't cook it away is my point. You have to get grass fed. You have to get chickens as well. They're harmed. If you, if you read the chapters in my book on factory, factory farming, even if you just go to YouTube and Google and, and look up factory farmed, it's, it's horrific. And these chickens should be pastured, grazing on pasture, eating, you know, worms and frogs and bugs. They're not vegetarians. They're not supposed to be eating corn and soy. Um, so they really should be eating, once again, what God created, what God provided. Mm. And, and I really believe that's the problem. We've taken God out of everything, and we need to get him back in. And that also pertains to the foods that we're eating. Eggs and chickens pastured, beef and lamb, grass-fed, grass-finished. Uh, you know, fish, once again, I repeat, wild caught, not farmed raised, because farmed raised in the aspect of, of eating fish is when the fish are, you know, in cesspools and they're eating pellets that where man is giving them. Nature provides everything, and when we eat food that nature provides, then our bodies are going to be healthier. You also mentioned that butter's good. Butter is good. Butter! butter. Is great. Butter! <laughs> Are you happy now? I'm thrilled when I saw that. I said, oh, good. Uh, I like that. Now, because uh, wh what else can you put on a good steak? You don't eat it anymore, right? I, I, so I never really was a, a, a beef eater, so I'm not, never, I'm not huh? missing it. But what else can you put on it? How about it? a fish? Do you eat fish? I do. What kind? I do. I, uh, wild, of course. Of course, wild. Anything with scales and fins. Right. I like so salmon, specifically sockeye salmon. I like cod. I like sockeye. flounder. Yep. I don't eat a lot of it because I'm more of a vegetarian. But I don't really like to put a label on what I am. But I, I probably eat more fruit than anything. That's my favorite food. So I eat a variety of fruits, me personally. But once again, as long as we're eating the food source of what God created for food, remember, the source is, has everything to do with it, then you could eat a variety of foods as long as you're you know, not eating the hormone-laden and pesticide-ridden. So if you're a meat eater, it's, it's perfectly fine. Tell us a little bit about coconut. Oh, one of my favorite foods. So coconut is from the tree of life 
Why is that? Because everything about a coconut is life-giving, and that's why it's called the tree of life. And it provides oil, which is an antimicrobial food, which gets rid of all the unfriendly microbes in the body. So we have coconut oil, coconut water. If you ever crack open a coconut, there's water inside. And that is also a life-giving, hydrating beverage. Why? Because the same plasma in coconut water mimics our human blood plasma. So if somebody's very highly dehydrated or they're very sickly, chronically ill, or even if they're not chronically ill, they just want to maintain their great health. This is a great beverage to bring rehydration to the cells, reduce inflammation around the receptor sites of the cells. It's great for helping reduce inflammation when you have a headache. Drink some coconut water right out of the coconut. Um, there's coconut meat. That's what you can eat the coconut meat just like that, or you can blend it with the water and make coconut milk or coconut cream. So it's a very versatile food. Mm -hmm. You can even make toothpaste with it. I have some recipes actually in my first book in reference to toothpaste or deodorant, mixing it with just some pure baking soda and an essential oil like maybe lavender oil or, you know, oils are really big in ancient and biblical times. They're healing. Um, and and it, it's just a remark. Coconuts are one of my favorite foods. What? Exactly, because uh, uh, I, I don't know if I can give a definition myself, what, uh, and we hear it so much. What exactly is inflammation? Well, inflammation is not really the culprit, like we're led to believe. Inflammation is the body's natural response to some kind of damage. Hmm. For example, externally, if you fell on your knee, you would have inflammation and right away put ice on it to reduce the inflammation, but the inflammation is the body's natural response to the injury. When you have internal inflammation like elevated cholesterol, which cholesterol is a repair substance, it's not the culprit, but it's, a, it's, it's an inflammatory marker. If it elevates, there's some kind of internal inflammation. So what that means is that there's some kind of damage going on, once again, in the receptor sites of the cells, which are creating the elevation of cholesterol. And what you can do to reduce that, once again, is go back to simplicity and, and repeat what I'm, what I'm saying by eating what God provided for food, getting rid of the cause foods, like the refined oils, the refined salts, um, the processed meats, you know, the hormone-laden foods, the non-organic foods, the processed grains. Those are the inflammatory culprits. And to reduce the inflammation naturally, we want to go back to herbs and real whole God-created food so the body is not dealing with internal damage. So inflammation is... It's, it's a around, response. It's a response. And it's around your joints, which causes the pain? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So an anti-inflammatory will help reduce pain. But what is that in anti-inflammatory? You want to look at things like turmeric, or once again, I repeat, like I said in the earlier, fresh raw juices help reduce inflammation. But we don't want to take something artificial to reduce inflammation because then we're artificially reducing the inflama inflammatory response in the body to the invader. We want to get rid of the invader and naturally reduce the inflammation so we don't have the calcification in the joints and the arthritis or the osteoarthritis or the fibromyalgia or all these different names that we call these inflammatory responses. So basically what you want to do is you want to go back to nature. It's really simple what we need to do. It's really simple. How about this one? Are you ready? I'm ready. High blood pressure. High well, blood pressure. I mean, it's I've seen people that are uh, 350 pounds that have normal blood pressure, and then people that are 150 pounds have high blood pressure. Peter, What's going just on? because somebody's not, not sick, it doesn't mean that they're healthy. Think about that. The absence of disease isn't the definition of healthy. Think about that. What Just causes, because someone doesn't have so high blood pressure. Now, yeah. I'm going to talk about the liver for a minute, since you mentioned high blood pressure. So the liver is our filtration system, just like we have a filter on a swimming pool. So if we keep the filter clean, the water will stay clean. But what happens if we don't keep the filter clean? The water becomes polluted. So just like our bodies, physiologically, how the body works, if we don't keep our liver clean with the principles that I've been discussing, then what happens is the liver starts to become fatty, the blood begins to thicken, and oxygen and blood flow to the heart and the brain start to restrict and blood pressure elevates because the blood got, got thicker. We have to keep the liver clean. How do we do that? Through fresh raw juices, grass-fed beef, water, coconut, Drink lots, a lot of, of water. lots of water, lots of water, lemons and water, uh, making you know eating lots of fruit, bananas, berries, you know pomegranates, dates, figs, 
Um, I just there's not a fruit out there. Mango is one of my favorites. There's not a fruit out there that you have to stay away from. So you could be heavy and have normal blood pressure. You can be heavy and have normal blood pressure, but you have to think about it. Is that person on a blood pressure medication? Do they have high bl blood glucose levels? Do they have fatty liver disease? You can't just look at somebody and, you know, because they're telling you that their blood pressure is okay, that it is. You know, we, we don't really know the facts, right. and, but, you know, they'll tell you what they want you to tell them. But it doesn't necessarily mean, once again, that just because their blood pressure is not elevated, that they don't have some other kind of issue going on. Someone that is overweight, cannot be healthy because you're putting too much pressure and tension on your joints, on your mm. cells, on your heart. It's unhealthy for the skeletal structure in general, so it can't be healthy. Overweight, you, you know, you wouldn't be overweight or under, underweight are not healthy. So we want to definitely keep and maintain a healthy weight. I heard someone say once that for every medication that you take, you're mm -hmm. going to get three counteract, something, three things worse happen to you. And or, you heard correctly. What, yes. what does that mean? What it means is when, when a person goes on a medication, a prescription drug, now before I answer that question, why are we taking the prescription drugs? Because there's a problem in the body. So then when you take the prescription drug, it artificially reduces maybe the blood pressure or the blood sugar or puts the thyroid back normal, but it's not, or lowers the cholesterol or whatever is wrong, but you're not really lowering the problem with your body, with your own immunological response. The drug is doing it artificially. So that's why there is an interaction or a side effect. So now you take a drug because of the, to counteract the interaction of the artificial reduction in cholesterol or whatever it is you're taking the drug for. So now your body's got to heal twice. And that's when I get the people. I get them after they've been battling and battling and battling. And now I have to help them heal, not only from the reason why they took the drug in the first place, but why, you know, but from the ramifications of the drugs now. So unfortunately, that's, that's how it's happening. But then they, you know, by the time they're on one drug, after two years, they're on like 10 drugs. And it's just a vicious cycle after that. And it doesn't Incredible. have to be. God provides medicine. Medicine is mentioned in the Bible a numerous amount of times, but it's not the same medication that's in, you know, prescription drugs. The allopathic mm. industry makes drugs that actually, you know, treat disease or manage disease, but we never get well. We never get well. Mm. But God wants us well and free and, and without any type of sickness. God wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. So we need to go back to God's pharmacy just the way I did. I am on this journey for 11 years now and I don't even get colds and I was chronically ill. So that's what is, is so amazing how God used me to bring this information to those that want it and, and want to be well as well. Have you ever seen any divine miracles? I have seen many miracles. <laughs> divine like, like miracles. Like bones in restored? Um, I haven't seen ligaments or, or organs uh, mm -hmm. restored, but it doesn't mean I don't believe it. I, I, I definitely... You uh, believe it. I believe it, because I, I, there's nothing that God can do, but f there's nothing that God can't do but fail. Right. So if he says he's going to restore a, a, an organ or he's going to restore a limb, I believe it. Why not? He's God. He's the almighty physician. He's the, the, the author and the finisher, the, you know, the beginning and the end. So, so what, does that, what does someone have to do to, for that to happen? What does somebody have to do for... Say if someone needs a... a, a a hip replacement. What do they do to believe God's going to do it? Well, I think I answered my question. You got to believe. You got to believe. First. I was just going to believe it, it right? Yeah, you, that was my my, my answer, uh -huh. and I wanted to hear what you were saying. Right. But we have to believe. We have to believe that our bodies can. But more importantly, we have to also connect with God. Said, "I gave you dominion over the earth. You will do works greater than I." So you know what that means? We are the body of Christ. He lives and dwells in us. He said, "I gave you dominion over the earth." which means that we, we will do works greater than him because his spirit lives and dwells in us. So we need to take that authority and use it. But we have to believe before we can take mm. that authority because if we don't believe, we're not going to take the authority and implement right. it. But that's what it's about. The power is invested in us, whether we're eating organically or we're not. Right. We have to believe on a spiritual level that the power is in us. Let's talk about omega-3. Well, everybody hears about it and saying, what does it do? Yeah, it's, it, everybody's on the omega-3 th craze. So, it, I mean, it's, it's found in grass-fed beef because, I'll, I'll answer that question in a different, couple of different sequences. Grass-fed beef contains high levels of omega-3. That's why when you get ch eggs from the farm, you open up the egg and it's nice and dark orange. 
that's carnithine, that's creatine, that's, you know, conjugated linolenic acid, which is specifically an amino acid that's very high in omega-3. So it is an anti-inflammatory, it is anti-autoimmune, it is anti-cancer, it's definitely uh, anti-all the bad stuff. So you definitely want to increase your omega-3s, but you are going to get them by eating even plant-based foods like chia seeds and flax seeds and hemp seeds and um, coconuts. There we go again. Coconuts are very high in omega-3. Not so much the water, but the water has other amazing healing benefits, but more like the coconut meat and the coconut oil specifically. Make sure it's unrefined, organic, and extra virgin. Um, but very high in omega-3 are the, some of the foods that I'm mentioning. Uh, avocados, another amazing superfood mentioned in the Bible in numerous amount of times. A great food for inflammation, a high uh, protein source. Um, protein is in everything, by the way. Um, it's the building blocks of everything, but there's tons of omega-3 in all your fruits and vegetables, including you say, potatoes. You <laughs> say you eat one avocado a day. One avocado a day. I specifically eat one avocado. If an avocado is really big, I'll do, uh -huh. ha I'll do half. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now, um, olive oil. Olive oil. I love olive oil. I love it too. Why is that so good? It's another food that's been around for centuries. It's mentioned in the Bible on numerous occasions. It's a, another food that olives are really good for us, olive oil. It's a uh, monounsaturated fat, so it means that the carbon atoms in the oil are a little bit, uh, a little bit longer than coconut oil, but they're, it's not so much a heat-stable oil, but it is loaded with um, polyphenols, uh, phytochemicals, antioxidants, anthocyanins. So it's loaded with vital nutrients that we need to sustain healthy bones, healthy joints, a healthy brain, a healthy heart. Really great for our skin. You start using olive oil. Make sure it's extra virgin and organic. We don't want any of the light versions or any of the... Remember, the way God provided is the only way we want our food to be. Nothing added, nothing taken away. So olive oil is tasty in salads, it's tasty drizzled on breads, and light cooking. 250 degrees is really as much as, it's not a heat stable oil like coconut oil. Coconut oil contains the medium chain triglycerides, so the oils, the, the heat stability is a bit higher. We can go 350, even a little higher with coconut oil, but olive oil I think is best for just some light cooking, uh, but there's a lot of nutrition, a lot of nutrition in olive oil. Uh, why does it so and start a company, in, uh, a food company, and just uh, say instead of looking for as God wants it? That's how you put on the label, as God wants it. Then it would be easy to buy everything. It would be so easy. To, it would just be perfect. <laughs> but we took God out of so much, and we've got to get him back in, and That's I'm going right. to continue to do it until he's here Amen. presently and everything. I mean, he is here. Amen. But we've got to, you know, us as, as, as his body have to bring him back into where he's not, where we've taken him away. Have you ever heard of the Budwick formula? Yes, I have. What do you think of that? I think it's great. I, 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 I think it's fantastic. That's a mixture of cottage cheese and flax, flax oil. oil yeah. Flax oil, yeah. And oil. berries, blueberries. Uh, all right, but she originally is just plain. You can add that stuff. You can add that you stuff. You can add that stuff, but it's usually it, it's flaxseed oil and cottage cheese. Yeah. And they're saying that kills cancer by the billions. It does. It does because of the uh, linolenic acid in the, in the flaxseed oil. Um, however, once again, and I'm not by any means saying that Dr. Budwick is, is a fad or anything, because amazing, amazing doctor in every way, shape, and form. And that, that method of, the, uh, of the, the therapy is incredible. However, we have to always remove the cause foods. It goes back to the liver. Everything goes back to the liver. If we don't remove the things that are harming us and we just, rem we just you know, start incorporating right. things that are good for us, right. then they're not going to work efficiently and effectively to the fullest ability like anything else. So more importantly, the viewers can start looking at removing some of the things that are harming them. Some of the things that we've mentioned already, artificial sweeteners, chlorinated, fluorinated water. Um, pork. Pork, <laughs> pork, shellfish, unfortunately. And I do talk about that more in my book. <sighs> you can read Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. God explains clearly, but you know, eating more fruits and vegetables. Remember fruit was the first food in the, in the Garden of Eden. It's more digestible than even vegetables. And I'm a big fan of vegetables, don't get me wrong. But fruit, if you're, especially if you're chronically ill, fruit and juicing, amazing how you can start to repair your cells. Fruit contains fiber, protein, very high in protein. Protein is in everything. This is important for you to understand. Protein is a chain of amino acids essential in everything, so we don't have to worry about a protein source because it's in everything. Whereas meat is just protein. 
whereas everything else has fiber, protein, carbohydrate, and, and, and low in fat. And that's what the diet should look like anyway. Um, but basically, you know, we just have to go back to what God created, and that's really what the key principle here is, bringing God back in it. How about pizza? How about pizza? Do you eat pizza? So there's a recipe for that in my next book, <laughs> in my cookbook, ah. which I know we're going to speak of later. So pizza, this is a great question. Whether you're a pizza eater or a pasta eater, or you came from an Italian family like myself, um, or you love desserts, God doesn't want us to suffer, suffer from deprivation and restriction. He wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. And I know I've repeated that because I don't want you to feel like you have to eat twigs in order to get well. So the bottom line is pizza is a terrible thing if you're eating it from a pizzeria or a local, you know, you're buying it frozen in the grocery store. However, if you change the source of the grains by going back to ancient grain, like einkorn flour or spelt flour, I speak of these in the chapter of my book called Don't Go Against the Grain. But you could use coconut flour, almond flour, and use raw cheese instead of pasteurized, hormone-laden, drugged-up cheese. Use organic sauce, use organic garlic and onions, fresh basil. There's so much that we can do nutritionally by changing the source of our ingredients and not only make the foods that we love, but fuel our bodies rather than make our bodies sick by eating the things that we love. So let's go back to the pizza. <laughs> All right. Okay. I love pizza. I mean, I, I, I'm sure I eat it for the wrong reasons, but it's like a comfort food. Sure it uh, is. You know, I, they, let me have a half a slice of pie. Anyway, <laughs> yep. uh, so gluten's not good, right? Well, I love that. I love that question. So is gluten bad or is gl gluten good? So everyone is in sheer terror of the word gluten today. And r nobody really knows exactly why, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a scientific reason why it can be bad and it can be good. So originally in ancient and biblical times, and I do reflect on this once again in the chapter Don't Go Against the Grain, in ancient and biblical times there, is, there were only three or four species of wheat, einkorn, spelt, and camut. And the gluten in there, which is a protein, gluten is the protein found in those sources of wheat. The molecular structure um, in the chromosomes were only about, there was only about 14 of those chromosomes. But now, in modern times, not only with hybridization that created f over 40,000 species of wheat, think about that, 3 to 40,000, that alone would change the molecular structure. And what happens is, the gluten now, because of all the chemicals and the glyphosate and the pesticides, we have super gluten. So that's why people are so intolerant of it. So we want to go back to organic and ancient. Okay. So gluten is not the problem. It's the source of the wheat. It's the source of the wheat. You got that? Mm -hmm. We covered, man, I'm telling you, I'm blown away because <laughs> we covered so much this time. And once again, it was extremely infor informative, uh, both spiritually, physically, and mentally. And that's basically the basis we got it covered uh, today. I hope that you really listened, took notes, and that you got something out of it. But let me tell you something. The most important part is uh, for you to believe in Jesus. Okay. Because that's from the get-go. Okay. Once you start there, okay, as Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Once you start there, everything else will follow. I wish I could explain it. It'll take a lot more. Take a lot more time to go over that little bit because that's very powerful. But thank you, Tony Jean. You did it again. You're so welcome. You did it again. Thank Wait you. Wait till next time when we go through part three.